Ka-ching! Ka-ching! And bada-bang, BMR. Dan Cook here, reporting to you from sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. Want to take a quick look at Benton Resources. We are talking about Marathon Gold recently. One of the top three, top five heap leachable projects in the world, just in terms of grade. Got a lot of upside exploration potential in front of it. We saw yesterday Marathon grew their resource base to about 2 million ounces. And the stock's selling off on that news, so opportunity there, weakness, be thankful, something like MOZ and a rising gold environment, that stock MOZ just keeps going higher in my view. And they're in green, right? Marathon Gold is this green. This is a slide from Benton's presentation, as you can see in the top left. This entire fault starts as what Benton calls the Cape Ray Fault in the lower left and works its way up here to the northeast and to what Marathon calls uh, Valentine Lake uh, Camp Fault. In total, we're looking at about 200 kilometers uh, from one end to the other. Like we've been talking about, maybe you've heard there's a bit of a staking rush that's been happening in this area. It started really with just the green and Marathon and Benton down here in the, this is Benton Resources land in the uh, pinkish purple color. Those are really the only two players in here for, for years. And then just over the last six months, you see uh, this yellow is all over the place from the very far northeastern end all the way down to the southwest and that's Altius so this isn't just like anybody coming in there this is Altius Minerals whenever they move we have to take a close watch because it's one of the best ex group exploration groups in the business so we we wanna borrow their brilliance when possible I mean if they're buying land just to the north here to the south, all along this fault line. I'm thinking Benton has a lot of exploration upside as well, in addition to Marathon. And, and um, you know, in the back of my mind, I kind of wonder, you know, Stephen Stairs, he's CEO of Benton. Families won awards, PDAC awards, and so forth. I haven't had a chance to ask him yet, but I just want to say, Stephen, I mean, are you wishing maybe you would have been a little more aggressive claiming land all along this fault line? And, I don't know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and uh, having bigger companies like this that can really move the needle in terms of budget and so forth. I guess it's got to be a good thing. The more the merrier, eh? So getting back to Benton, what I want to try to do here, what's the moral of the story? Why am I doing this? I want to try to make the case that Benton at 12 cents today, it's uh, got a value of... What was it? Nine and a half million dollars. Okay. Decent share structure, about 80 million or so outstanding. 12 cents gives us a nine and a half million dollar market cap. And I got this little chart for you here, uh, kind of summarizes things. So approximately Benton Resources has three million worth of cash and securities. So I want to, again, try to make this argument that their Cape Ray projects alone are worth at least six, probably more. And being that Benton is a, one of the quality prospect generators out there, that means we got 10, 12 other projects. I mean, one, they option out to a little company called Rio Tento, by the way. So there's a number of catalysts uh, that could emerge for BEX, just a question of when, really. And I think we get all those for free. So real quick here, I like to see, I mean, when the when the stars just align, fundamentals, again, I think the fundamentals are good. We're not overpaying for this thing. And when that aligns with the technicals looking strong, that's a beautiful thing. So you could see going back into the doldrums of, uh, you know, 2015, not much activity going on with the stock, sitting at two, three cents mainly. Now we get a little action first part of last year. I always like to see good strong moves up on, on big volume. 
And that looks pretty clear to me. Uh, you know, first uh, intermediate kind of support there was six cents or whatever you want to call it. And now it's at nine cents. So a push higher. Full disclosure, I've been in Ben Resources since four or five cents. I'm a buyer at six. I'm a buyer at nine. I'm a buyer at ten. So any weakness on this thing is going to be met with buying interest. There's really no doubt in my mind about that. So if it gets down to ten or nine, be very thankful because that is a genuine opportunity. Okay, so let's get back to business here. First things first. I want to show you. So, so, so Nordman. Let's let's first actually look at this. So, a company called Nordman Engineering. Uh, you see this red check mark area here. That's where they've got a 50-50 deal with Benton. And Benton, look at all this land. About I don't know two three times as much, maybe more that Benton still has a hundred percent ownership of. And that's just this lower left portion. I don't believe that includes any of this uh, up here. So, all right, who, who is Nordman Engineering? Where are we going? Going back to this deal, which is about two years old now, Nordman Engineering, you see, can earn up to 50% interest. They've already got this thing through PEA. The numbers are pretty good. It's a relatively small capital investment. I think it was around 45, 50 million. So let's get rid of that. Now we know who, who's Nordman. All right, so here's Nordman Engineering's website. Um, they show these selected projects. Here was one they did for that little company called Rio Tento. Uh, Tento, Tento, Potato, Potato. Look at this, $325 million in total. So, I mean, these Nordman guys, from what I understand, that, you know, this is their first foray into owning part of a gold mine. They normally just build them and you know, design them and so forth. So that's interesting. Why Benton? Why Cape Ray? There must be something they like about that. And clearly this Norman Engineering is, is somebody. All right. So now let's see. No one's on the line. Um, hold it. All right. So getting back to the case of Benton, being worth six million at least just this Cape Ray project. So now we got their indicated resource. Here's the gold. We don't even we won't even focus on the silver. And this is that partnership they have with Norman. So indicated and inferred, just the gold at a not too shabby grade between four, five, six grams a ton. That's four hundred thousand ounces. And again, it's a fifty fifty deal, Norman is, you know, they've been ponying up there and so far, so surely they they got their 50% interest. They're not going to walk away from that. So Benton's stake would be 200,000 ounces of the 400 total. And being that this area is becoming quite prolific, I want to say those ounces in the ground should be worth at least 30 bucks an ounce. So so right there we got the sixth. A six million dollar valuation that I was saying I was going to argue for, and if we just say that their indicated inferred resource, just the gold, is worth thirty an ounce, boom! Right there, their stake is worth six million dollars. And again, that doesn't include any of this, none of that, none of uh, this in the middle portion with Altius again in the yellow, just on them like yellow on rice. So. Now then, let's close all these things out as we kind of wind this down. One of the projects I think people are a little bit, at least moderately, enthusiastic about is what Ben calls the Bedivere project. They just picked this up recently. Nice little rock there. 41 ounces a ton. Grab sample. And you see, uh, who knows? I think, I think they're doing some work out there now and and this is still one they have an option, so they, you know, they've got a, a chance to acquire this to put in a, a little bit of money, and looks like it, it could become something. Maybe not. We'll see. But I believe we're getting that catalyst for free, or a potential catalyst. Now, here's one you probably haven't even heard anything of, even if you follow the story. 
Ben is not talking about the Panama Gold Project, but you can see they've got this little chunk in, outlined in black, which is right next to Gold Corp. So this is Gold Corp's Red Lake Project. We're talking Red Lake Mining Division here. So assuming we're in a venture bull market and gold is moving up strongly, I mean, here's a story that somebody's going to option and they've got the whole storyline. I mean, stories are kind of important, at least if you know how to tell them right. And they're sitting right on the boundary of, of uh, Gold Corp's, one of their most important mines in the history of the company. So, so that's another one, Panama. I don't hear much about that. They've got the little deal they optioned out to uh, Rio Tinto. I believe even Tech was another company that's optioned. And then if you look at their projects, I mean, there's another 10 of them here. So bottom line, Benton Resources, BEX, there's two ways to play that camp, in my opinion. It's either Marathon, if you want to go for the higher quality, bigger deposit, most likely a takeover story with the MOZ, or you go for the Prospect Generator with Benton, Maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but that Cape Ray, those projects they've got are worth at least $6 million. So I like that deal. I like getting everything else for little to no money down. Alrighty then, let me just leave it there for now, and I will catch up with you all soon.